well. Now, so talking about the mechanism of action for the lipid soluble hormones, endocrine gland, we have studied about this, you know, the secretions will be put where? In the blood. Through the blood, it will reach the target cells or the organs, target tissues, target cells or the organs. Fine? Endocrine glands, ductless glands. Now, this is a schematic, a very simplistic way of representation. What you see there at the top is the blood capillaries. Fine? Do you see? These are the blood capillaries that you can see. Perfect. Now, these that you are seeing are the lipid soluble hormones traveling through the blood. Fine. Traveling along with the blood through the blood vessels to be specific. So these are lipid soluble hormones. Now, of course, they have the target sites. They have to reach the target sites. What helps them? The blood helps them. It travels through the blood along with the blood fine great you have the cell membrane over here next move inside you have the cytoplasm you have the nuclear membrane and what you have next is the nucleoplasm you have the intracellular receptors okay intracellular receptors in fact i have moved deeper nucleoplasm this is inside the nucleus it's inside the nucleus now the question is think about these I have talked about that these lipid soluble molecules or the hormones can cross the cellular membrane, lipid bilayer. Now I have arrived at a point where there is nuclear membrane now. Will it be able to cross this layer now? And the point is I am talking about the intracellular receptors where present in the nucleus. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yeah, let's see if it's possible. So this is the hormone coming out of the blood vessels, fine. It is traveling as we have already talked about because this is lipid soluble. So lipid bilayer, it can actually cross. It will travel more inside, deeper into the cell. They have reached the cytoplasm. And I'm talking about the nuclear membrane. This is also made up of the lipid bilayer. So yes, it can definitely cross the nuclear membrane also, fine. And of course, it will reach there inside the nucleus where the intracellular receptors are present of course binding would happen once binding happens hormone receptor complex has formed this would result this would result a change this would result a change and that change can be basically activating that activating the receptor proteins fine so these hormones once they cross the membrane they've gone intracellular and they have bound to the receptors. Receptor hormone complex. This results into the change. What is this change? Change is basically activating these protein receptors. Fine. So from inactive to active form. Correct. Now these activated proteins. These activated receptors or the proteins can undergo further changes. Further changes to carry out various biochemical processes or responses fine clear about the path clear about the pathway look into the picture it's very easy it's very easy nothing else simple basic concept you have to understand is lipid soluble structure or the chemical composition of the membranes that's it you can answer the questions so you know these uh, proteins once they get activated they will undergo various changes okay result into various processes and that would end the end result would be some of the physiological changes that we see. Lipid soluble hormone estrogen. Let me take an example and help you understand. Estrogen, it is a. Remember, we studied about this. It's a steroid hormone. Steroids are lipid soluble, sir. Right? It's a steroid. They are lipid soluble. Let's see. Similar endocrine gland, blood vessel, target organ of the tissues. Fine. I'm talking about the ovary. Secreting what? Estrogen. Traveling through what? Blood vessels. Along with the blood and reaching the target tissues of the organs, which is what? 
the uterus, for example. Fine, great. Let's move on. Let's see in detail. Now, think about this. Relate here. Take the help of this diagram. Try to relate with the name estrogen here. Now, the lipid soluble hormone I'm talking about is estrogen. It's responsible for the development of dash sexual characteristics. Fill in the blank. Yes, they help in the development of dash sexual characteristics in male or female. <laughs> Easy, I know. You can answer it. It's secondary sexual characteristics in the females, of course. Okay. Now, estrogen is a steroid hormone. They are lipid soluble, of course. So, it will cross both the cellular membrane. It can cross the nuclear membrane too. Fine. And reach the intracellular receptors. Fine. So, once hormone receptor complexes form, the changes will happen. It will undergo various processes, help in the processes. And one of the examples I told you, to develop the secondary sexual characteristics in females. I hope you remember the secondary sexual characteristics in females, as well as males. Questions are asked often. Great. So, to summarize, activated hormone, the receptor complex, fine, here, what it will do, it will actually act on the genome and then what will happen, certain specific mRNAs will be formed and mRNA, mRNA, we'll study later in the 12th standard, this will help in, you know, producing some proteins, the process will study, you know, replication, transcription, translation, these are wonderful concepts. I'm waiting to teach all of those to you. Okay, well, so yes, once more, these activated hormones, okay, oh sorry, the activated hormone receptor complex, because the complex is formed, right? Now, hormone receptor complex, okay, this will act on the genome, result in the activation of the, or rather, formation, in very simple terms, formation of the specific mRNAs, target, okay, specific mRNA. From the specific RNA, mRNA, it will be translated, translation will happen and the specific proteins will be formed and these proteins will actually help in the in, in, in many processes like some physiological responses like tissue growth, differentiation, etc. Clear all of you? Wonderful.